this video is sponsored by Samsung. TVs, it's a crazy thing. I told myself I wouldn't make this video dramatic, pause the music. Let's just make a simple guide for everyone to understand. A few weeks ago, I spent about an hour with one of my friends talking about TVs. Turns out he's actually looking to upgrade his current setup. He is moving into his new condo, so he wants something new. Now, it made me wonder, maybe it would be a great idea to make a guide for those who are looking to get a new TV. Besides, with the holidays coming up and just around the corner, the prices TVs sell at are definitely worth checking out. So, to make sure you get your money's worth, I'm going to show you what to look for when buying a TV. Whether that's an 8K panel or a 4K panel you want, QLED, OLED, I'm going to be reviewing some of the latest Samsung TVs in order to guide you towards making a better purchase, including for the gamers. So Samsung just sent a couple of gaming TVs for this space to set up and try and I was more than happy to bring them in for this guide, especially since these units do come with dedicated soundbars. This here are the OLED S95C and the new QLED AK QN900C, both massive TVs at 77 inches and 75 inches. Whatever TV you end up getting, make sure you ship size like these directly to your studio or at home. Some companies like Samsung actually provide delivery service for all their orders and for them, the same service is also available on retailer websites. Let me just quickly say something, unboxing TVs this big is definitely a must with someone else. They are not easy to handle by yourself so keep that in mind. In these boxes, you will find a setup guide for both TVs. Each and one of them come with a set of cables along their own remotes, TV stands which tend to be the heaviest pieces of the box aside from the TV, and of course with Samsung something that can help you keep a setup clean, they have what they call their Slim One Connect box. If I can give you guys a quick little tip, always make sure to read the setup guides, it'll teach you how to unbox the TV, how to take off the foam, and how to set up stands, very important. Oh, okay, so this opens. Yeah, this stuff opens here. Wow, it really hooks there. That's it. That's actually so sick. You push the styrofoam in. And it goes in like that? Yeah. That's so clutch. Yeah. Wow. Like I said, guys, instructions. When you actually take the time to set up these units to their stands, you'll realize that this box can mount to the back of them. One of the cables that come inside the box allows you to keep the connection minimal between the TV and the box, so that's super cool. However, if you want to set up this box somewhere else, you can always use the longer cable and maybe route it in between your walls, something we very much did in order to keep our cable management clean. Both remotes here come with built-in batteries, they are chargeable through a USB-C connection and they seem to also charge via this small solar panel. So most TVs unboxings will look like so. As for setting these up, on our end the OLED S95C and the Neo QLED AK QN900C will sit on this full white Vesta unit, a unit that currently stores our consoles and helps us store the Slim Connect box. I know a lot of TVs don't come with such feature but essentially this here really allows you to ease your access for when it comes to connecting any sort of media. So let's say you were to wall mount this or install this in a place where it will make the IOs very hard to access. This here keeps connection access so simple for you. You'll realize that the Slim One Connect boxes have the power outlet that feeds the TV, 4 HDMI 2.1 ports with one of them supporting eARC, very important for gaming and to send advanced audio formats. It also has three USB-A ports, an optical out, an X-Link connection, an antenna connection, and an ethernet port. At the end of the day, this whole box really allows for Samsung to keep these panels clean and minimal. I think this could be something to consider on your end. Along that, I also think that making sure that your power cord is detachable from the back panel can also help with your setup. Most importantly, if you are planning to route the power cable through the wall. In terms of weight, both TVs weigh around 41.5 kilograms and pro tip, always make sure your console or bracket arm can support your TV's weight. Last year we had another unit attached to this wall and the whole panel almost fell to the floor. 
When it comes to sound, I'd say the minimum requirements to make sure the speakers on the unit are decent. Like if you're not looking to spend the extra cash on something like a soundbar, I do recommend you do some research on how great the dedicated speakers are. For example, the OLED S95C and the new QLED AK QN900C are two TVs that have an integrated speaker setup. With this and the ability to have Q-Symphony integration, it makes a TV like this upgradable and perfect for something like our studio in terms of sound, meaning that as a brand, Samsung have the ability to expand your surround system with something like the Q990C soundbar. And that setup can also be enhanced by pairing two Atmos enabled wireless surround speakers and a single subwoofer. Basically, making your sound system acquire additional help with other types of sound accessories to make your sound experience even greater. All of this allows for Q-Symphony to come in and make it easy to connect something like the Neo QLED AKQ and 900C to allow the TV speakers and soundbar to work simultaneously. With this, the dedicated TV speaker setup that something like the QN900C has now becomes 22 channels. This allows you to simply achieve a complete surround sound, adding to the 3D immersive experience with a minimal setup. And minimal is what you want, especially if you are someone that lives in a condo or in a limited space that doesn't allow for much. All of this to say that, well, the Q-Series soundbar allows for the TV to not automatically mute itself, but instead work with the bar to deliver a full and realistic sound as much as possible. This also has a wireless Dolby Atmos, Samsung SpaceFit Sound Pro to help you calibrate the audio within your space, has Alexa built in and Game Mode Pro 2.0, a mode that optimizes directional sound to be fully immersed in the audio and feel part of the game. What I'm trying to get at here is that when buying a TV, it's important for you to take all these factors into account. Are my TV speakers good enough? Is my sound system expandable? How expandable can it be? Are there any extra features worth looking for when it comes to sound? You gotta ask yourself these questions before going out there and shopping for a new TV. In terms of design and size, there isn't much to consider when it comes to design. Samsung, for example, is one of the brands that also likes to build infinity edge screens with an ultra thin edgeless profile. I mean, after all, nowadays a lot of TV brands race towards being as minimalistic and as clean as possible. Samsung tried to eliminate thickness by having the slim one connect box. This can make things like mounting a TV to a wall easier and cleaner. TV mounts are also important. A back panel with proper VESA mounting holes or a unit with proper stance can be a deal breaker. If you don't plan out on mounting your TV, making sure that the feet will properly fit your media unit is important. Sizing of course matters depending on your living room space. I've got two 77 inch and 75 inch panels here. Know that there are calculators out there to help you decide which size can be best for you. This tends to have a huge impact on the perceived picture quality so I do recommend plugging in the numbers within the Artings calculator to get some accurate measurements. As a whole, the overall design can matter and at the same time it shouldn't matter much, but a lot of this stuff can make a company decide on how to make their back panels more robust with higher end materials and so on. Sometimes brands like to build heat sinks in the back to dissipate heat, although of course a lot of thermal design decisions depend on the type of panel a manufacturer will choose for their models. And this eventually can have a say on whether or not a design adds thickness or not. And so when it comes to the type of panel you want, there are a few popular choices at the moment with the most common ones being QLED and OLED. When talking about mid-tier TVs, OLED versus QLED can be such a deal breaker for a lot of people. Like for example, for some people OLED is the better choice because of the deep blacks, the pixels are self-emissive, and the panels tend to be thinner. And for others, QLED is their bread and butter because of things such as higher brightness levels and the layer of quantum dots can enhance the color's expression of the display. But this doesn't entail the full story. You see, there are certain characteristics to consider when evaluating QLED versus OLED. Display technology, picture quality, contrast ratio, viewing angles, durability, and for some, energy efficiency can be factors to consider. QLED are panels that use a backlight system, typically LED backlighting, combined with a layer of quantum dots, quantum dots that enhance the color and brightness of the display. 
OLED panels, on the other hand, are panels that utilize individual organic compounds that emit light when an electric current is applied. Each pixel is self-emissive, allowing for precise control of each pixel's brightness and color. This means OLED is able to achieve infinite contrast ratios, excellent viewing angles, and can be thinner. Choosing a panel really boils down to what you really want to prioritize. Each type has its perks and quirks, so it's all about finding the one that meets your expectations and budget. As for resolution, 4K versus 8K might be a question you're currently asking yourself. The choice between a 4K and an 8K resolution TV depends on several factors, including the size of the screen, viewing distance, available content, and budget. But it's not that simple. It's also important to know that while 8K transmission is really not a thing at the moment, 8K TVs use upscaling technology in order to be able to accommodate the resolutions. For example, the Neo QLED 8K QN900C uses its neural quantum processor 8K to magically transform any low resolution content into a high quality 8K resolution with better texture, richer details, finer edges, and less noise. The downside to this is that when it comes to gaming, AI upscaling is not supported on PC connection nor game mode. However, with Samsung, one good way to experience it is through their gaming hub. On the other side of things, a TV like the S95C with its OLED 4K panel can provide a native resolution out of the box, and a lot of the times these TVs can also allow themselves to transform content into mesmerizing colorful 4K pictures thanks to their powerful AI processing technology. Whether you're streaming an HD movie, watching live sports, or playing games, you can experience it all in sharp 4K resolution thanks to AI-powered processors that upgrades your content scene by scene. So at the end of the day, picking between an 8K and a 4K TV is all about deciding how much detail you want in your picture. If you're on a regular budget and you're not aiming for a large panel, a 4K TV is way more than good enough. They're more common and you can watch lots of stuff in awesome quality. But if you're all about having the newest, fanciest tech and you can size up your panel, maybe, I don't know, consider an 8K TV. It's like having crazy sharp detail, especially on those really big screens. Although I will say, a lot of people like me truly find it hard to point out the differences between a 4K and an 8K panel. And so here comes picture quality. Once you choose what type of panel and resolution you wish to pursue, Picture quality is obviously the most important factor that influences people into buying a TV. Every TV out there has its own science with how they handle picture quality. Most TVs allow you to modify their picture quality settings to match the type of room and lighting you are in. This sort of features comes in super handy because I've personally tweaked things at home in the studio and in Jan's basement. Ideally, you really want to make sure you can turn off things like motion smoothing options, play with noise reduction, tweak the auto brightness setting, black levels, and so on. When it comes to gaming, I think this is probably one of the most important features you should consider when buying a TV. Like generally, I mostly play console games on TVs and it's important to know what type of features a panel can deliver to make your console experience far better. For example, high refresh rate, VRR and a game bar would be features I recommend looking out for, like the QLED AK QN900C and the OLED S95C. Delivering 144Hz is awesome and it makes them one of the only TVs in the market to be able to do so. However, note that they can only achieve 4K at 144Hz while gaming on PC. They also deliver FreeSync Premium Pro with HDMI 2.1, a technology that makes video games look smoother, reducing screen tearing and stuttering. These TVs also feature a game bar, basically a feature that allows the optimization of gameplays in one single menu. Most often in such menus you can adjust things like screen ratio, have a mini map zoom, virtual aim point, input lag check, FPS, HDR, VRR and more. One thing that's interesting about Samsung is the evolution their cloud gaming platform has seen. Like if you don't have a console nor a PC to enjoy titles, Samsung have created an onboard platform that allows you to play games without the hassle of juggling multiple consoles or a custom built PC. With Samsung Gaming Hub, 
all you really need is a controller. The hub gives you options for streaming on platforms such as Xbox Game Pass, Nvidia GeForce Now, Utomic, Luna, and so on. This is basically an all-in-one solution where there's no console required. Like for example, with Game Pass you can honestly stream over a hundred Xbox games straight from your TV and by using the quick panel you can allow yourself to turn on the music on Spotify while playing some AAA games. So I think this is it, I know I'm not perfect so if I did miss something worth mentioning don't be afraid to leave a comment down below. We are a community so it's nice helping each other out. This pretty much sums up the basics of what to look for when buying a TV. I know the perfect gaming TV is hard to find, there are millions of options out there and each one has its pros and cons. I think with the holidays just around the corner I figured this guide could help you guys find your perfect gaming and living room TV. And who knows, maybe the Samsung OLED S95C or the Neo QLED AKQ and 900C will be the right fit for you. Massive thanks to Samsung for allowing us to try a couple of their TVs at the studio. Really enjoyed having this whole soundbar set up here. Check out their latest holiday deals if you want to get one at a discounted price. I'm signing out guys, take care and I see you all next week. <laughs>